So we did the RDC outcomes trial to test a hypothesis that patients with recent ACS, not at goal on maximal statin therapy, would derive clinical benefit in terms of outcomes from adding alirocumab to their secondary prevention therapy. And we did this because despite, re despite all the progress we've made in the care of ACS patients, they remain at substantial residual risk. In fact, they are the group of all patients with acute coronary disease, with coronary artery disease, who have the highest risk of subsequent adverse events. So we tested this in a large outcomes trial, enrolling patients not at goal on truly maximal statin therapy following an ACS one to 12 months prior to that. It was a double-blind randomized trial. Patients received either alurocumab or placebo every two weeks subcutaneously in blinded fashion. Median follow-up 2.8 years, high quality data. The results are very simple. Number one, we met our primary endpoint, which was a reduction in MACE by 15%, which is exactly what we set out to do. The next bonus finding that we did not expect was a 15% lower all-cause mortality in those patients. Now we have to be careful with the interpretation of that finding because of technicalities in the statistical analysis in which we pre-specified other events in the order of analysis. But still, all-cause mortality was lower and that's an important finding. The third finding, which is a pleasant surprise as well, is the remarkable safety of that compound. In particular, there had been concerns regarding neurocognitive events, new onset of diabetes, cataracts, intracranial hemorrhage with these potent LDL lowering agents. And we found that with alirocumab given for years in these patients, over the duration of the trial was that caveat. Over the duration of the trial, there was no serious safety signal. So that's, it's a therapy that's effective, it's remarkably safe, so the risk benefit equation is extremely favorable, and it does, is it's associated with reduced all-cause mortality, which is really important. Now, where does this take us? Well, I think there are two questions that remain to be addressed. The first one is, can we start this therapy in the acute stage? We enroll patients a few weeks or months after an ACS, but ideally you wouldn't want to wait to start therapy because we know that if we delay starting therapy, many of these patients are never gonna get them. We would like to start early on when they're still in the hospital, which is only a couple of days nowadays in the care of MI patients. The second question is, who are the best targets for this treatment? From our data, some of our analyses suggest that the best targets are the patients who start off with the highest risk and the highest baseline LDL, in whom the magnitude of the treatment effect was greater, a 24% reduction in MACE, a 29% reduction in all-cause mortality. And if we have to start somewhere in our cost-conscious environment of today, I think this is where we should start.